Last week we had a matrix like this. It was Tuesday a week ago. For this matrix, we have identified two eigenvalues. Here they are. And two eigenvectors. That's the information from, from Tuesday last week. Yeah, it is. Right. So for this matrix, for this matrix, diagonalization is achievable because we have, look how many eigenvalues we have. We have exactly two eigenvalues, which coincides with the dimension of my matrix, too. And if you look at the corresponding eigenvectors, they clearly linearly independent. Because for two vectors, being, uh, being linearly dependent is equivalent to one being scalar multiple of the other, which is not the case in, for these two. That's why in this case, diagonalization is achievable, and all you have to do, you have to take D matrix, which is diagonal with the eigenvalues on the diagonal, negative 6 and 3, here it is, and P matrix, which consists of the eigenvectors as columns. The word of caution here, of course, when you, when you choose the order of columns, you choose the same order as the order of the corresponding eigenvalues. That's, that's what is just dictated by the argument I presented on my slide before. That's the diagonalization. It, basically, you, we, we may stop at this stage, because that's it. We just found P and D, which work for the matrix A, P and D, which ensure, uh, ensure that A equal um, P, D, P inverse. I mean, we can check this now. I mean, we can check this identity directly with this particular choice of the matrices, but we can be absolutely sure the check will work because we established this identity in the full generality on a slide before. But I'll do the check. Here we go. If I compute AP, that's my A matrix from here. That's my P matrix from here. If I compute that, that is uh, first row, first column, it's negative 15, 45, it's 30. First row, second column, it's 3. Uh, last row and first column, it's negative 54. And last row and last column is 0. Here's the product of AP. Here's the product of PD. We're checking, actually, we're checking this identity right now, that the AP equal PD. So we're checking semi-diagonalization identity. Uh, here's my P matrix from here. Here's my D matrix from here. Remember, we know that if you multiply something by a diagonal matrix, it's simply scaling each column by the diagonal entry. That's our discovery from the, second, from the slide 2 today. But we do the multiplication anyway, just complete one. So if I compute that, first row, first column, 30. It's negative 5 times negative 6. First row, second column, 3. Second row, first column, negative 56. And the last one is 0. AP equal PD. If you, if you want to know what's the inverse of P for 2 times 2 matrix, when you compute the inverse, if you have any matrix of size 2 times 2 with the entries A, B, C, and D, the inverse of such matrix is computed like this. You're supposed to remember this formula from the first year, from the first semester. So for this matrix P, for this matrix P, if you want to see the inverse, here it is. It's negative 1 by 9 because determinant here is 0, take 9, so it's negative 1 by 9. And now you swap these two entries, so it will be 0, it will be like this. That's the inverse. You can cancel minus across everything. That's the inverse in this simpler, in a simpler form.